And we are back now with the conclusion of this edition of InfoWars Nightly News with another patriot. And uh, before we go to Stuart Rhodes, I thought I would read uh, this wordy quote uh, from George Washington, because every day we're going to have a patriot or a control freak quote. We're going to uh, give you quotes from the globalist and other control freaks throughout history and quotes from patriots who stood up for human liberty. And here's the George Washington quote, real patriots who may resist the intrigues of the favorite are liable to become suspected and odious, while its tools and dupes usurp the applause and confidence of the people to surrender their interest, George Washington. And basically that's saying dupes and sellouts will never stand up against corruption, so they will be given the largesse of the government chest or of the tyrant, but those who won't go along with it will end up being labeled uh, as the terrorist and being rounded up. Uh, so that's basically what George Washington uh, had to say for us on that point. Now I had Stuart Rhodes, founder of Oath Keepers, on the radio for about an hour today getting into the history uh, of military commissions and secret arrest of citizens and basically martial law in America. Now the NDAA is law. And uh, he's the founder and director of Oath Keepers. He served as a U.S. Army paratrooper until disabled in a rough terrain parachuting accident during a night jump. He's a, uh, a firearms instructor and a former member of Representative Ron Paul's D.C. staff. Uh, he's also written for SWAT magazine. He's a graduate from Yale Law School where he uh, won one of their most prestigious awards, Solving the Puzzle of Enemy Combatant Status. It won Yale's uh, Miller Prize for Best Paper on the Bill of Rights. And he also was taught for the U.S. military history at Yale. Uh, and it just goes on from there. He's a real expert on uh, the dangers of applying the rules of war to the American people. And he joins us to, 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 to condense the history um, of where our republic has come from and where it's going, the same the same problems we face today we've been through before, and the tyrants are pretty lazy. They just rewrite old stuff that's already been overturned. And then I want him to basically have a call to the police and military to choose who they will serve, because the NDAA, though we fought it, has really done something good. It's a silver lining. And that is, it's really proven for everybody that we do have a criminal government at the top and that they really are tyrants. And it's woken a lot of people up. So the wheat is being separated from the uh, chaff. Stuart with OathKeepers.org, great to have you here with us. You've got the floor, my friend, for the next 20 minutes. Tell us uh, where we stand. Well, the bottom line is, is what's happening to us right now is exactly what happened to the founding fathers that compelled them to take up arms in defense of their traditional rights as Englishmen and also in defense of their natural rights as human beings. And the exact same causes and grievances that they suffered, we are suffering now. Among those listed in our Declaration of Independence were denial of jury trial and the attempt to make the military superior to the civil power, and also the claimed power to whisk a colonist over overseas to be tried in England rather than in front of a jury of their peers in the, in the colonies. And one more charge against the king was that he was attempting to subject them to a jurisdiction foreign to their constitution. And this bill and the, the prior actions of two administrations now, both Bush administrations and the Obama administrations, do all of those. The claim is, is that the powers of the commander-in-chief during wartime apply not just to a foreign enemy, but also apply – to Americans and that Americans can be treated exactly the same as a goat herder in Iraq. If a goat herder in Iraq is accused of stealing a neighbor's goat, well, he'll get a normal Iraqi trial. But if the U.S. military thinks he's, he's a member of the resistance, then they will just pick him up. Or if they think he's supporting the resistance, they'll just pick him up and put him into military jurisdiction and he'll wind up in Guantanamo. And the claim is, is that they can do the exact same thing here at home. Our Constitution from the very beginning has had a sharp line of separation between what can be done to a foreign enemy and what can be done to an American citizen. A, an Iraqi cannot be accused of treason because they don't owe any loyalty to the United States. A U.S. citizen or lawful resident, on the other hand, can be accused of treason because we do owe loyalty to the United States. And that's exactly what's supposed to be done with an American who's accused of making war against the United States or aiding its enemy. As the Article 3, Section 3 
treason clause in the Constitution plainly states, it defines treason as consisting only in levying war against the United States or adhering to their enemies, giving them aid and comfort. And it says, no person shall be convicted of treason unless on the testimony of two witnesses to, to the same overt act or on confession in open court. So there are extra protections. There's a requirement for two witnesses, not just one, and not secret evidence or secret witnesses, two witnesses and or confession in open court because the founders had experienced denial of jury trial. Um, Parliament had passed laws that stripped away jury trial in certain cases. They had passed laws to expand the jurisdiction of the admiralty courts, which were their military tribunals back then. So they had suffered those abuses. And to prevent that from ever happening again, Article 3, Section 2 mandates that all crimes must be tried by jury. And then Article 3, Section 3 defines the crime of treason and tells you exactly what must be done and it provides additional procedural protections. And this is what's being violated right now by the president and also by Congress and also by the courts. The U.S. Supreme Court, unfortunately, in 1942, threw the Bill of Rights in, in the trash can and authorized military trial of a U.S. citizen. That is the precedent they've grabbed a hold of now and are using today. And a modern uh, Supreme Court in 2004 in the Hamdi case, the case of a U.S. citizen being detained, um, reaffirmed and grabbed that old World War II precedent. It's totally illegitimate. It directly violates the treason clause, and it violates the rest of the Bill of Rights, the Fourth, Fifth, Sixth Amendments. You have a right to a grand jury indictment. You have a right to a jury trial in the state in which the crime is alleged to have been committed. And Justice Scalia in his dissent in Hamdi is spot on. He said, this is ridiculous. You're directly violating the treason clause. You're violating the Constitution. What you're doing is not under the Constitution. It's illegitimate, and that's why he dissented. And so what's going on right now is that everything the founders put in place, everything your forefathers bled and fought and died for, and everything they put in the Bill of Rights to make sure that the, the government could not escape the chains of the Constitution, that's all being turned on its head, as though we were in Nazi Germany or Stalinist Russia. The same thing our forefathers fought against, fascism is now on our shores and being imposed upon us by domestic enemies of our constitution. And the message to all the military out there is that just like I did when I served as a young paratrooper, when, whatever your branch is, when you swore that oath to support and defend the constitution, it was against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And the founders put that requirement of that oath in the Constitution itself in Article, in Article um, 6. They mandated that you must take an oath, and everyone must take an oath. All the, every person in the, in the branch in, in the government takes an oath. Unfortunately, all three branches now have directly violated their oath. They are oath breakers. They are violating the Constitution. And, and frankly, what they're doing is treason against the Constitution because they are making war on the American people. There is no power. Nowhere in the Constitution is Congress given the authority and the power to declare war on the American people or to wage war on the American people. And quite the opposite. There's a separation between what can be done to a foreign enemy and what can be done to us. That is now being torn down. You must defend it. This is your test. If you do not stand up and defend the Constitution, if you do not refuse any such orders and be prepared to defend the rights of the people, if you don't do that, then what you will have become is an oath breaker and a traitor to your country. And, and God have mercy on your soul, because a, an oath is a sacred obligation under God that you will do as you said you would. It's a promise. And everything your forefathers fought and died for will be, have been destroyed. Um, I know a, a World War II veteran who's 101st Airborne. He fought at the Battle of the Bulge. He's 91 years old. And I talked to him the other day, and, and, and he is angry at the fact that everything he fought against, that he went overseas along with his brothers to go fight against fascism, and now he sees it happening here. And so if you let this come to America and you let it happen on your watch, then you will have – you might as well go down to, to Arlington and spit on the graves of every war dead in this country's history from 1775 on.
will have been for nothing if you let this happen. So you have to do what you swore you would do. You have to defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. You have to have the same courage you would have in combat. You're willing to go and fight and die like I was when I served and as I still am right now as a veteran. You have to have the same dedication and willingness to give your life in defense of the Constitution as you would in defense of your buddies in combat. It's the same thing. And as a veteran, I got to tell you that you will not just slide into the Fourth Reich because us veterans will not let that happen. We will resist, and if it comes to it, we will fight. We will exhaust, like our forefathers, we will exhaust all peaceful remedies to, to um, defend our rights. But if pushed up against the wall in the same way the founders were with a long train of abuses, which is what's happening now, we will fight also. And so that's our message from the veterans to the, to the current serving is that you will have to kill us all. There are 25 million veterans in this country, and if you violate your oath and attempt to detain American citizens or apply the laws of war, including just killing us, if you try to do that, we will fight. Stuart. You have to kill us all. Very powerful, Stuart. I just want to add a caveat here that humans, as we pointed out today on the radio, we go through the same cycles. Doesn't matter what color, what culture, humans are humans, we do the same stuff over and over again. Every historian, every anthropologist, every sociologist, I got chills just now, admits we're going into a very decadent cycle. The whole world, top universities recognize America is becoming fascistic. The NDAA does do you know, what we say it does, even though there's these denials because they want to have these powers, but they don't want to admit it so we can have a political fight over it. They want to stealthily implement this. And I get so many emails and calls and comments on the street of, well, what can we do? Or, well, I have nothing to hide. Okay, it's a tyranny, but I'm not fighting against it. A tyranny is like a lion eating gazelles. It's eating gazelles because that's what it does. It, you know, like a, a gazelle doesn't say, well, I'm a friendly little gazelle, so the lion isn't going to try to eat me. This is what tyrannies do. And you notice they're taking the military death benefits through fraud. They're stealing houses that people have paid for through fraud, the, the big banks. Uh, they're, the government's caught laundering drug money and shipping drugs in and shipping guns into Mexico to blame the Second Amendment. And the proofs of it, of the corruption, just, it's luminous. Special interests came in, took over the government, and are doing whatever they want. That's tyranny. And we have let it happen. And now we're so far down the line, the criminals know we're waking up, so they're trying to pass laws to declare people that are standing up for freedom and common sense and due process as the terrorists. And we have all their training manuals. So people have to understand, tyrannies will reduce us to despotism. They will reduce us to poverty like a third world country, because that's the nature of what these people do. And their fruits are bondage and servitude and pain and poverty. And... Uh, We've got to turn this around now, and I, I'd like you to speak to the point, to get your perspective and see if you agree, that we fought NDAA, but as you and others have pointed out, they were already implementing this stuff. Now, the fact that it's so naked is really sending out a clarion call, and a lot of people who are on the fence, I'm heartened to see, aren't groveling in fear. They're seeing the illegitimacy of this. They're seeing the enemy fly their Jolly Roger openly. It's piratical. It's openly criminal. And so now the choice is so clear. That's right. The choice is, is in front of you. It's, it's so plain. And it is building on what, what two administrations have already claimed and have already done. President Bush detained two American citizens as unlawful combatants. Obama has done even better by killing American citizens. And their claim is they can do that at will to any American. And just by, by designating you on their say-so alone as an unlawful combatant, now you're in the military system. You want to challenge that designation, it will be a military judge that will determine your status. And that's what the NDAA says in Section 1024. It says that determinations of status shall be done by a military judge, not a grand jury, not a jury of your peers in front of a civilian court. A military judge. That's totally illegitimate. So it's in your face that the time is right now. You do not have the option of deferring to some future point your decision. You need to decide right now which side you're on. Either you're on the side of liberty 
for which this country was founded. The whole point of America is freedom. As our Declaration of Independence says, the only justifiable purpose for government is to secure our natural God-given rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And whensoever any government violates those ends, it becomes illegitimate and we have a right to throw it off. And that's why our founders rebelled. And so we're in the same position now. We have a very narrow window of opportunity to fix this by by peaceful political means through nullification as individuals, as towns, counties, and states, and also by the military nullifying. Sheriff's departments and military must nullify and refuse. And, and while we're at it, sweep all of these oath breakers out of office. But if that fails, then the only last remedy we will have is if the U.S. military refuses and does a mass stand down like what happened in 1989 East Germany. And message to the military is, if the East Germans can do it, a bunch of guys who grew up first under fascism, under Nazis, and then they grew up under communists, if they could do what was right in 1989 when the wall fell by refusing to fire on their own citizens, then you can do what's right. All you have to do is remember your oath and read the Constitution, read the very plain text of Article 3 and the Bill of Rights, and then do what's right. You already swore the oath. You long ago lost the option of ducking out and just following orders. If you do so, like I said before, you will be spitting on the graves of all of our war dead, and you and your children, you'll be leaving your children to tyranny, to darkness. Well, that's the thing about tyranny, historically. You're a historian and somebody who's written, you know, award-winning papers on it, but the general public who hasn't looked at it, I challenge them to. Not only is it riveting and entertaining, it, it's, it's humans act the same. We have the same life cycles, live the same amount, act the same, do the same cycles. History does repeat. And you better learn it or you're doomed to repeat it. And folks, it's bloody. And when you look at what's being set up, they're not setting a tyranny up just because they want all this power. They're doing it because they want to make us slaves. They're doing it because they enjoy it. And, you know, you look at the East Germans, they had lived under absolute war and such tyranny that it was so austere and so Spartan, they were clear-minded and started to, to see what was happening. As, you know, the, the East German former officer who was part of the stand down, the colonel you, you uh, uh, helped us get on, uh, pointed out, they went from absolute tyranny at the end of World War II to people slowly demanding rights. He says America's going from incredible liberty sliding in the opposite direction. And so we've got the entertainment, the football games, the hot wings, all of this you know, wrapping paper that makes it look sparkly and nice, but under it is classical tyranny, whereas they were so Spartan they could really see it. And I think that's the disadvantage we've got, is that the mind control now used in America is so sophisticated. How do you break through that, Stuart, A, and B, why should we be concerned they're setting up a tyranny? What do governments always do when they set this up? Well, as, as, as founding father George Mason said, a, a, a frequent recurrence to fundamental principles is what must be done to preserve liberty. And the founding generation rebelled not just against what was happening to them, but also against the claim to power. They didn't wait for it to get to its logical conclusion and to be used in the broadest sense. They rebelled against the principle, the claim that they could rule over them in all cases whatsoever, the claim that they could set aside jury trial and try them in front of a court of admiralty. They rebelled long before they felt the full effects. Because they of were the historians abuse. and were into research, they knew every they time knew. tyrants declare a tyranny, they intend to use it. Right, as as Patrick Henry said, you know, what purpose does this, this martial array have? It's meant for us. The chains they're forging are meant for us. They can be for no other. They understood human history. They had seen the history of the Star Chamber in England, where you had secret trials of, of, with secret evidence and, and torture and coerced confessions. They understood all of that. They understood the reason why 600 years of struggle to establish the right to jury trial and, and the right of habeas corpus. They understood that history, and they knew that tyrants would always, or, or willful men of power, would always be tempted to to throw away any restraints on their power and to use that power 
in a willful manner against anyone who opposed them. They had seen it throughout history over and over. And let's be clear, Greece on. all over the world, the Magna Carta and U.S. model of juries and due process, that has become the model. And now America, where it all really crystallized, is becoming the model of torture and secret arrest. I mean, it is a total reversal of what we stand for. I mean, the Bill of Rights, Constitution, Declaration of Independence, common law is the republic, is what made us different, not perfect, but because we never implemented it fully, but, but better than all the others. And, and whereas other parts of the world are moving towards liberty, we are plunging like a falling star into the black hole abyss of despotism. How do we reverse it? Well, just, just by realizing that, realizing that we are the defenders of Western civilization, and our Bill of Rights is the crown jewel of our republic, and it is the cornerstone of our republic, and it's the high watermark of Western civilization. If you let it fall, then Western civilization will fall. Because that's what defines the West, is individual liberty, is restraint on power, and all the struggle over thousands of years will be snuffed out. We back into, into blackness, like during the Dark Ages. So we have to stand and defend it. You're defending the West. Al-Qaeda cannot destroy the United States. Radical Islamicism cannot destroy the United States. Only we can destroy ourselves from the inside out. And that's what's happening. We are going down the same road the Germans went down. The Nazis scared them with the, the fear of terrorists, with communist terrorism, the Reichstag fire. And that's how they got the German people to sacrifice their, their liberty on the altar of security. So we Americans will be different because there are Americans who will not be willing to, to do that. Exactly. Sacrifice. Anybody that comes to you and says there's a physical threat, give your rights up, they're obviously the author of the terror or they're the ones using it. That's the definition of terrorism is threatening something for political or economic gain. And, and, and I watch these politicians invoke fear and the crowds hiss and get into being scared. How do we go from land of the free, home of the brave to just this religion of fear? It's so ridiculous. I mean, it is it is so alien. It, it, it is so disgusting, Stuart. I want to ask you about the tens of thousands of police and military you talk to. I tend to criticize police as we see the examples of abuse magnified. And I understand that is a minority, but the system is trying to encourage that. But especially with military, though, to, to say that the awakening is, is, is at warp speed or hyperbolic or exponential is putting it lightly. Again, I... If you go back 10, 12 years ago, I was very negative about where we were going. So I'm not a cheerleader here. I am seeing explosive awakening. But there's a danger. The system is aware of that. Just look at Ron Paul. We never even got into him today. The system throws everything they've got now, and it still can't stop somebody. That's the barometer for them. And uh, so, so break down how fast is the awakening you're seeing or do you disagree and, 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 and say it's not happening this fast? And how, how is Ron Paul a bellwether or weather vane or barometer of that? Well, I think, I think the, we have two great weapons in our, in our hands. One is, well, one is the truth in our own history and our own, their own constitution. And the second one is the Internet and freedom of speech. And that's what's galvanized Ron Paul's campaign and also the work of others like Chuck Baldwin, who's running for lieutenant governor in Montana. And, you know, what you do, what I'm trying to do, all of that is dependent upon freedom of speech, which is why they're going to try to shut down the Internet with SOPA. That's like the enemy combatant status for websites. They can just designate your website an enemy combatant and black bag it. Yeah, they know we're no, waking no up, process. so they're moving on every front, so we better make hay while the sun shines. That's right. And, and it is – we will win in the end. Provided we have enough time, the truth will prevail. We will win, and they know that, and that's why they want to shut down the internet because we are reaching the troops, whether they like it or not. We are reaching the police officers, and we are reaching our fellow citizens, and we are waking them up. And for, like I said from the very beginning of Oath Keepers, I know from my own personal experience in the military that those who serve do have honor and courage. But what's happening is, is the powers that be are relying on them being ignorant, not teaching them what they should know, their own history. We all went through public schools. We weren't taught our history. They rely and use that ignorance, and then they twist it and turn it and try to tell you this is all lawful. This is all okay. 
that, oh yeah, this is what you always do with enemies in wartime, and including U.S. citizens, which is total nonsense. So they're, they're trying to get you to believe a lie, a great lie. And so what you have to do is just open your eyes and see the truth. Go read the Constitution, read what, what the founders fought against, read what they said when they, when they founded this, this, this country, when they, when they founded the Declaration of Independence, when they, when they wrote the Articles of Confederation and the Constitution, read what they were doing and why they did it. And when you do that, once your eyes are opened, you will not be fooled. And I do have confidence in you to have the courage to do what's right. I know you got courage. Once you know what's right, use that courage and stand on your oath. You have an obligation to do what's right. You're once right. You know what it is. But unfortunately, it has been pointed out that moral courage is rarer than physical courage uh, to go against the peer pressure. But I see that peer pressure uh, cracking right now. I think it's important, again, to go back to where I started, though, Stuart. And I want you to close on this and make any other points um, uh, you know, that you'd like to the millions of folks in the aggregate that will end up watching and listening to this. When you look at the landscape, you look at history, that's why those of us that study history are so horrified. People need to understand there's not really a choice. I mean, there's the illusionary choice, the, uh, this barrage that you can go along with the system or you can stand for freedom. And the system sells the idea that standing for freedom is the dangerous course. But if you look at history, going with the tyrants is the absolute dangerous course. People say, Alex, you've got so much courage to do what you do. And, you know, and, or you could have sold out and all this stuff. Sell out to something that's so destructive? I mean, this is a nasty tyranny. It's only going to get progressively worse. It's, it's like selling out and not cutting out cancer. It's going to be hard to go get the cancer cut out. It's going to be a lot harder to die from it. And, and as people need to understand, there's not really a choice. I mean, if you study history and know this stuff like Stuart and I do or Ron Paul does, and we're not that smart of guys. We just learned about real important stuff and started researching it. Anybody can learn about this. It's history. It's who we are. It's, it's the human struggle. It's the human condition since day one, since zero hour. And every day is zero hour. And, and we're here now, and there's no choice. You've got to choose freedom. The new world order is real. The tyranny. All of it's now in your face. We've got to jump on these people because despite all their fiat money and all their derivatives and all their media whores, we didn't mind being ridiculed 30, 40, 50 years ago, 10 years ago. We warned people. We knew the globalist program. From, they were so arrogant their documents were public. So we preached the enemy battle plan. Now it's happening. And, and now those time bombs, those seeds have been planted. But they are committed. Now, that's what I'm saying. This big collision is here. This, this great time is now here. We're in the fight because people were willing to be imprisoned and killed and tortured and set up. Forty years ago, if you talked about this, they would kill you they, in many cases because they were scared of the info ever getting out. Now it's out. They're trying to just manage it. So people need to understand people died and were imprisoned and ridiculed and attacked and, and, and old men and women handed out pamphlets 50 years ago about the coming New World Order and were laughed at, you know, out in the rain in front of, you know, buildings so that, so that we could build on them. We've got an infrastructure a thousand times what it was just 20 years ago. Our infrastructure is going to continue to grow. I know I'm ranting here, Stuart. It's just that if you think about the work everybody did before us just so we'd have a launch pad to be able to challenge these people, we better use it, Stuart. Absolutely, and of course, look at look at all the the blood and 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 sacrifice of our forefathers and everyone who struggled for human freedom for hundreds of years. I mean, all of it is on the line right now, and now it's our turn. It's our watch. It's our turn in the breach to stand up, shoulder to shoulder, and to defend the rights of our children and our children's children. Because if we don't then they will be lost in darkness. And as you said, it's an illusion to think that you're going to be safe. Go and you should all go and read the Gulag Archipelago by Solzhenitsyn. He talks about what happened in the USSR under communism, under, under a tyranny. Everybody was at, was at risk. Stalin purged, you know, mindlessly purged officers out of the military and in the police. No one was safe. It was it was an absolute tyranny over everybody, an arbitrary, bloodthirsty, you know. A never... raw exercise of power they called the Red Terror. Right. And and look at look at the French Revolution. Same thing happened there. 
people who were chopping off the heads of the royalty and, and the priest, they wound up being – they're having their heads chopped off also. They succumb to the guillotine too because it turned into the reign of terror. It happens over and over again throughout history. It's unrestrained, raw power. That's what it is. That's right. And Good it's, people it's have to get together with constitutions, with conventions for the common defense of basic rights so that evil power can never amass in gangs to overrun us. It's so simple. And if you, th if you cast it down, which is now happening, you open the gates to hell. And it's happening, people. The gates are now open, and we're standing at the gate facing the New World Order. And... Uh, it's, it's, I tell you, it's going to be an incredible confrontation, Stuart. It is, but all we have to do is remember who we are. We are not Germans. We're not peasants in China. We're not, you know, peasants in Russia. We have a legacy and a history of fighting for liberty. Americans have always fought for liberty, and we will fight again. And so we will not be the Fourth Reich. We will not let that happen, not without a fight. So once again... Choose now who you serve. You'll either be on the side of we the people or you'll be a traitor on the other side, like the loyalists, like the redcoats that our forefathers fought against, and we will treat you the same. I think of Patrick Henry. Um, you know, the war has already begun, and if you want to live in denial, may your chains sit lightly upon you. May you forget that we were your countrymen. But, I mean, the evil they faced uh, was, was militarily powerful and corrupt. Uh, and the greatest military the world had ever seen. But the, the evil we face, the Redcoats just wanted to make you a slave. This New World Order with their eugenics and the rest of it, it, it is it is just such a nasty group of people. And, and they, they're so much weaker, spiritually even, than the Redcoats. I mean, it is a pathetic enemy, Stuart, and to watch them perch upon us is nauseating. Well, look, look at Lindsey Graham sitting there, Mr. Pasty Face, pencil neck lawyer um, in the Senate, talking about, you know, to an American citizen, if you want your lawyer, we're going to tell you to shut up. You're an enemy combatant. You don't get a lawyer. You know, he's not going to come black bag me. He's going to send one of you guys, somebody in the current serving military or police, because Lindsey Graham doesn't have the guts to do it. So don't be his tool. Make him come do it himself. Step aside. When the time comes, and if we are if we are forced to, to fight for our freedom, all we ask is that you simply step aside, open up a can of beer, have a seat, and watch the show. Because the veterans of this country and the patriots of this country will take care of business if that's what we have to do. All you got to do is, is stand down. Well, when people are overthrowing the entire Bill of Rights and Constitution, Stuart, you know over the years I've always called for peace and the info war. But, uh, you know, I cannot deny the truth of what you're saying, that as things escalate, you, you have to tell, well, I, look, in closing, Americans bought 3 million guns in December, over 1.5 million background checks, on average over 2.1 guns sold per background check. Uh, and, and, when, and they had a survey out in USA Today, they said, why are you buying guns? And they said, we don't trust the government, civil unrest collapse. I mean, shouldn't that be a message to the system? I mean, do they really think, after all the work we've done and the history of America and all of it going back, that this is going to be a cakewalk? Yeah, I think they do, because they've mistaken our love of peace and our lawfulness. They mistake that for weakness. And, and every enemy we've ever faced has underestimated us. The British officers thought Americans would not fight. They joked about being able to take, you know, one one battalion of grenadiers and, you know, and guild half the males in America, you know, going up and down the coast. They they, they joked about it until April 19, 1775, when they got the crap shot out of them all the way back to Boston. Then they realized they were in a fight. And at Bunker Hill, they realized that they were in a fight. When you had doctors and, and, and old men standing there and fighting to the death, that's when they that's when they realized that they were in a fight. But every, you know, the Nazis underestimated us. Um, Tojo and, and, and Imperial Japan underestimated us. They all thought Americans were weak. We always proved them wrong, and we will again. And so, one last thing I want to say to the military is: is yeah, our dream would be a mass stand down. You just simply stand down like like the East Germans did in 1989. But if 
God forbid, if elements of our military do apply force under the laws of war to the American people and do start blackbagging Americans, there's going to be a fight, and then the people in the military will have to choose which side they're going to fight on. Just like our militias back then in 1775 had to choose which side. Some were loyalists, some and were loyal but to the folks crown. have also got to be smart, Stuart. They're going to stage false flags and stuff to blame it on us to try to get people all organized. That's why they hate it that we're exposing their false flags because we take that tool away from them. Uh, Stuart, amazing. Thank you so much for your great work. Give us, give us one minute on Ron Paul's rise and getting behind Ron Paul. Well, like, like I said earlier uh, today, I work for the man in the, in the position we're in right now. There is nobody else who is going to stand up and say, you know, and, and refuse to use these powers as commander in chief. He's the only commander in chief who will honor his oath Obama has already shown that he, he will desecrate his oath. He doesn't care about it. He's already violated the Constitution grossly. Nobody else who's running for office has the integrity or the track record of standing up and defending the Constitution. And so if you want to preserve this republic, um, he's your only choice as far as for president. Isn't it amazing at this key crossroads that Jefferson reincarnated uh, you know, figuratively would be standing right there for us to choose him? And of course, he's old like the Republic as well. I mean, all the archetypes are there. It's 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 like science fiction. I mean, here we are, and this archetype, you know, the elderly uh, but omnibudsman, wise Gandalf, the the you know the, the Jeffersonian spirit is right there waiting for us, never compromising, never wavering. Would we choose him? I mean, I mean, it's it's right there. It's 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 very it's very providential. Well, it's also a test of, uh, of us. I mean, it's, it's, it's a sad sight to see that because of the fear of, of radical Islam, so many um, conservatives are rejecting Congressman Paul. I mean, I'm speaking as an individual. Oath Keepers does not endorse candidates, but I, I can't, you know, my conscience insists that I speak out as an individual and say that if, if you reject him, you will have missed a huge opportunity to solve this in a peaceful way, in a constitutional manner, in a lawful manner, without without the American people being forced to to fight a revolution. So we, this is this is the time to only vote for an oath keeper. If you if you don't vote for someone that's going to keep their oath, if you vote for an oath breaker, that makes you an oath breaker. So and that's, I would, that's I, how I see it. I agree, and I would just close with, he wins by running, though. Look, this has got to be a nightmare for the globalists. All these issues in the Fed, all of it, and, and an illustration of how many Americans do know the score. Look at how Ron Paul has grown exponentially. And again, as he's pointed out, as he said last night, he said, we're getting liberty out to people. This is about an idea that is transcendent. He understands that. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's a huge victory. It's Ron Paul's success so far is like a Trenton victory. I mean, it, it is off the chart. Stuart Rhodes, OathKeepers.org. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is teleprompter free. And, uh, you know, we were 35, 40 minute interview with him and one with the Bill Bean earlier, the news. I mean, wild horses can't drag me away. Even my dear little children who are at home begging for me to come home and watercolor with them. I mean, I love them more than life itself. And I, I'm, I'm here because they don't have a future if I'm not here. And you don't have a future if, if we don't stand for this. It is all happening now. I mean, I every time Stuart's on, you know, I, I get uh, tears in my eyes. And it's not even, it's not that I'm even sad or freaked out. It's more of an involuntary realizing the point of history we're in. It is, it, it is so big. <laughs> I cannot get that across to people. And the responsibility I've got, Stuart's got, Ron Paul and so many others, this is big. And all of you out there are so important. I cannot tell you how important you are. You're the eyes and ears of liberty in your town, your city, uh, your state, or in other countries. This idea of freedom is transcendent. 1776 worldwide. The Ron Paul liberty movement is spreading worldwide. People are imitating that worldwide. People are seeing the good side of America, not the bad side as well. They're, they're hearing us speak out and say, we don't represent these banks that have hijacked us. We represent freedom. It's that challenge that points out the evil. And it's here. So I cannot tell you enough how important you are out there watching and listening. Be a leader. Reach out to others. You are so important. Resistance is victory. And it's a cheesy line from a movie, but quite frankly, I later learned the people that wrote it are actually listeners of mine, so it's one of my lines that's in the movie. Terminator, uh, Resurrection, or whatever it's called. 
that uh, if you're listening to my voice, you are the resistance. That's an InfoWars quote. If you're hearing my voice right now, you are the resistance. When I went and saw that movie when it came out, I'd heard there were listeners and all this stuff, and I was watching. I'm like, what? That, those are my quotes. People are like, well, you're getting a Terminator quote. No, that's an Alex Jones quote, folks. The answer in 1984 is 1776. That's an Alex Jones quote. But again, that's just an average person stating common sense. If you're listening to my voice, you are the resistance. And resistance is victory. Lord willing, because it's all up to God, we'll be back tomorrow night, 7 o'clock Central, for as long as we have this free internet to reach you. Please get the Stuart Rhodes interview out to everybody you know. I mean, I put a little silly video out, and it gets 2 million views, and have people like Stuart on with just incredible historical information, it gets 100,000. It needs to get 5 million. Get this video out to everybody. All right, that's it for InfoWars Nightly News. God bless you all.